morning students <coughs> we are going to discuss on uh, important aspect of uh, intellectual property rights today that covers patents copyrights and trademarks and geographical indications as well so we'll go into details i am b satyanarayana associate professor in mechanical engineering <coughs> so this section starts with the what is the need for intellectual property disclaimer so this presentation is uh, made for education purpose so the even though the accuracy of the information was ensured but iare will not have any legal bindings on this presentation and also it may be noted this presentation even though is copyrighted it can be portions of it can be copied for education purpose this is my profile i am a post graduate from uh, iit mumbai in energy systems engineering i passed out in 1988 and uh, i worked in vhl for 30 years as a, in gas turbine uh, designs and engineering and technology i retired in uh, 2021 so i am also part time faculty in uh, institute of uh, engineers uh, associate institutions like uh, engineers of college and rec i am a certified energy auditor and i have interest in solar energy and patent drafting so i am member of institute of engineers so why we should learn about the intellectual property what is the importance of it and what is its relevance to iir as you are aware iir is an educational institute uh, it has lot of uh, intellectual property in the form of project thesis lab records calculations faculty and uh, student publications so these are all having valuable technical information unless we protect them th there is a chance that uh, others may copy this and get benefited it is uh, our hard work uh, others may get benefited instead of we getting benefited and a lot of uh, we have r&d set up so those innovations from this uh, setup shall be properly protected using the appropriate intellectual property so to learn this course there is no uh, legal background is required see patent law so even though word is law it is this section is designed to give a insight for engineers okay no formal legal background is required to understand this course the course content was divided into eight segments okay first the overview of a and classification and the uh, justification for ip okay. the second thing chapter will be on copyrights third and the geographical indications fourth one will be protection of undisclosed information that is nothing but trade secrets and uh, protection of integrated circuits electronic circuits those also if some you are with a new design can be protected then there are mechanical industrial designs that also can be protected and there is a protection of plant variety which is uh, we are not very much concerned right now these are the elements of intellectual property all these elements can be protected in some form or other the chapter 1 covers overview and classification justification of it intellectual property rights is actually creation of mind it is a labor with creation of mind intellect it's a creation of or the output of a intellect so the intellectual property gives a monopolistic right means the inventor can only use sell or trade or import others are excluded from this right so others were not allowed to use your invention you only can uh, do business sell or assign get all the benefits but for a limited period of time okay why will this uh, rights is given by government but why government shall give a monopolistic right to anybody it will increase the price 
there is a justification for it. Suppose government won't protect the intellectual property, I will not come out into the market with the technical data so that others uh, and, uh, will not be able to copy. I will keep it to myself. So, like, uh, I will keep it like a trade secret. So, for um, centuries together, it will be with one person or family. But suppose government encourages this person who invented <coughs> to share this knowledge to the government in the form of disclosure for a, and the government uh, in um, uh, trade off gives protection for the his uh, invention for limited period say patent period in india patents are protected for 20 years from the date of filing so 20 years he can only manufacture sell trade import all this is invention related things so after 20 years what happens this will be go to public so this uh, disclosure will be made public and public uh, can use that knowledge. They can now trade or sell or market. Okay. What is the benefit to the public? It is uh, once that patent period is over, the knowledge will come into public domain. So the public can get, get benefited. For example, any new drug comes, like for example, a new cancer drug it will be very costly because the inventor has spent billions of uh, uh, dollars to uh, sp he would have spent a lot of um, resources, money, time and all that to invent this. Now he was granted a patent. He will sell this drug for 20 years, let us say. After 20 years, this formula of this drug will be made public. So the public can manufacture the other competitors can manufacture and the rates will fall in the market that's why it's called a term called generic drugs you are aware of general drugs generic drugs are those for which the patent period is expired so the generic drugs are very cheap in the market which will have same chemical composition and generic drug manufacturers do need not have to spend anything in the ready-made formula is there they have to only manufacture so their cost will be almost something like one tenth of the proprietary drug. So that's why in India government will insist uh, all doctors to prescribe as much possible generic drugs because they are cheaper. Patented drugs only to be given to very critical patients and uh, where which no alternative is there. So that way um, the beneficiary of the general public is getting benefited by generic drugs once the patent period is over. And uh, next comes who who gives this patent rights? Government gives. We and uh, when we have described this that uh, it is the government which is, uh, which gives the patent rights. And who administers? Which department? Which uh, uh, arm of the government does this? So not all will be done by single government agency. They are classified into many categories. So for example, patents and uh, trademarks and design, design and uh, designs. These are uh, comes under the administration called uh, controller of designs, patents, trademarks and geographical indication. So these four categories will be administered by the control general of patents. Whereas copyrights is under control of human resources uh, ministry. These copyrights will be awarded by the human resource because there is a uh, artistic and educational work is involved. So human resource development department of the government will administer copyrights. Then there is the electronic circuits. Electronic circuits, uh, the layout design is controlled by Ministry of Electronics, Telecommunication, Information Technology, such ministries will administer. Then there is protection of uh, a plant variety a new seed kind of thing is administered naturally by agriculture ministry and uh, their offices were located the head office is located in Calcutta so he is called uh, controller general of patents designs trademarks so it is located in Mumbai 
the deputy controller of patents and designer is located in two three places one is in kolkata second is in chennai which is probably nearer to us normally we fail either in chennai or kolkata and uh, there is another office in ahmedabad so uh, in the slide i have listed their email addresses and all their website also there ip india is the website so you can uh, access and you can uh, go through their activities actually for any government agency to administer these rights it has to be first passed in parliament as an act so all this administration will happen around that act so the original act for patents in india finalized act is done in 1970 the year 1970 the patent act was uh, uh, given clearance by parliament and then uh, accepted by president Uh, given consent it is called give consent so the patent act was uh, originally done in 70 of course some amendments were done in year 2002 as well as 2017 the 2002 was mainly done to align our patent act with trips agreement there india has signed trips agreement it is nothing but trade related aspects of intellectual property rights it is that many member countries were there they all formed a one kind of a union and uh, accept a certain conditions that patent filed in one country will be uh, uh, can be filed i mean in another country within 6 months of filing in the original country similarly the countries or member country uh, patents will be treated uh, with the equal rights in the sense for a citizen how they will treat the how they will grant patent and all for the member countries also the indian government has to treat like as if it is the, their own citizens then what is rules patent law is understood what is patent rules patent rules are also part of patent act but for each small small changes of the administrative nature which are administrative nature need not have to go back to parliament to approve the small changes suppose fees for filing the patent is 7000 today suppose government want to increase to 7500 need not go back to parliament for this so that will be notified in the patent rules they have taken one clause in the patent act saying that from time to time government department can issue the rules so one time approval they taken for amending the uh, rules of the patent act so patent rules but major major things you have to go to parliament back uh, which is uh, anything contrary to the act which is not there in the act suppose you have to uh, put it so uh, major nature changes of the patent act then we have to go back to parliament for approval but small small changes like changing fee structure opening another office of patents those can be done by patent rules then similarly the act covering designs industrial designs is uh, formulated in 2000 passed in 2000 okay then there is a trademark trademarks uh, there is a act for trademarks which was passed by parliament in 1999 then for all this associated rules are there trademark rules were formulated in 2002 similarly there is a geographical indications of goods this was act passed by parliament in 1999 so Uh, similarly the rules also formulated in the year 2002 department of education covers uh, the copyrights not the patent office so for that there is a act original act was in 1957 of course it was amended in 1999 to take care of certain uh, uh, obligations to international community so we will start chapter number 2 which is uh, copyrights and infringement copyrights are granted to whom copyrights are granted for what copyrights are granted for any literary dramatic or musical work okay suppose i sing a song and record it need not have any excellent musical qualities quality is not a criteria as long as it is original my own original singing and recording if i go with this recording to the Uh, ministry of human resources a copyright will be given suppose i draw a painting i will draw a painting of india uh, of uh, say one lion as long as it is original i am entitled for a copyright 
no need to actually it need not look like a lion it can be looking like a dog also but you will be given a copyright because it is original as long as it is original you, you have the right to take a copyright similarly from music it need not be in coherency and harmony still if you sing something record you are entitled for a copyright for that music it need not be very good quality or anything like that the the crux of the matter for copyright is originality if it is copy cut paste thing you will not get copyright if it is original suppose already there is a painting of oh, gandhi ji i also paint gandhi ji i will get a copyright even though there are hundreds of others who painted gandhi ji on different canvases they all uh, have copyrights i also get a copyright even though gandhi ji exactly does not look like also i will get a copyright so quality is not a bar for getting a copyright similarly not only painting many things dramatic work literature if you write a book you can copyright you can make a presentation for example this presentation is copyrighted then there is a soundtrack there is a performance all this are can be copyrighted so this copyright act uh, as per 1957 and later it is amended in 19 as we told we'll further discuss on copyrights yeah what can get a copyright protection suppose you write a book it's a original so you get a copyright for that book suppose you made a pamphlet or a ire pamphlet then you will get a copyright for that nobody can copy your pamphlet then there is a table there is a suppose you narrate a story your own original story then for that also you can get a copyright then there is a letter you have written letter something it is completely your original so you will get a copyright there are hundreds of things you can get a copyright then there is a suppose you made a public speaking that that's a recording of it or the transcript of it also can be copyrighted then suppose you performed a drama the, you will get a copyright for that the recording of the drama also can get a copyright then suppose you depicted a map how to reach your home on your own and you made a drawing so that is also you can patent that you can copyright so diagram sculpture suppose you engraving something you made a engraving design that also you can copyright suppose you made a layout that also can be copyrighted so copyright covers very vast amount of thing if it is anything original you can get a copyright what is the criteria for grant of copyright originality is the must original it must be original then only copyright will be given cut paste you won't get it must be in some fixed form suppose it is your idea it is still in your brain you will not get a copyright you have to present in a paper or a recording in some form which where you can preserve it it must be in some fixed form simple idea the brain cannot be copyrighted okay and as we explained no literary merit is required suppose you made a story which is not a real it's all fiction then also you can get a copyright any kind of written material would qualify any dramatic work musical work captured not necessarily good quality as we explained can be copyrighted then there is a painting a drawing you made a drawing of some object which even though it is not a good quality it can be still be copyrighted then a photograph you have taken a photograph from your camera it is a copyrighted to you so photograph is also it's a uh, original that's why it is given copyright a tv show copyrighted things can be a, a given assignment okay you can assign this copyright to somebody for using that suppose you wrote a novel you gave this to a film producer to make a film then you have the right copyright he will make a film so you, you are assigning this copyright to him you will get some in, in return some consideration some financial benefit to you and uh, there is one provision in this act section 57 of this act copyright act says even though he assigned he cannot uh, distort this story uh, to tarnish your image suppose you wrote a story about uh, virtues of uh, truth speaking and all 
suppose the film producer takes your story and distorts and makes uh, it uh, distorted and makes a film then you can sue him under section 57 of copyright act if you distortion is made which may tarnish your image your reputation then you can prosecute him there are well known story of three idiots uh, the author has sued those uh, producers for uh, modifying his story they have not uh, made uh, as it is they made certain changes uh, which author felt that uh, it is distorted and uh, it has uh, tarnished his image so he went to court after after court settlement achieved after uh, six months or something but it is it can be prosecuted then there is a, uh, how to detect the infringement suppose somebody violates your copyright how to detect how the cases are decided you also drew a picture of gandhi he also drew a picture of gandhi how you can say he is copied there is two criteria for deciding it suppose you are painting was you are having that person has access to your painting so that he has seen and copied so first accessibility check will be there suppose he has you can if you prove that he has access because he is your uh, employee or he is your uh, vendor or he is your friend then he has access then suppose both the pictures together if substantial similarity is there some corner sector could be different but substantial similarity is there then is a fit case for copyright uh, prosecution there are few exceptions to this copyright suppose one principle was narrated by newton it was published in the book and the student wrote the newton law of dynamics in a exam because he has copied whatever newton written can the student be prosecuted no the exception is for education research purpose it can be copied Uh, some extent there are exceptions like that so uh, for education research which is not having any commercial value that can be copied as is that uh, text is for education purpose similarly for review purpose so there are some exceptions to copyright uh, uh, violations now interesting question what is the validity for a copyright period validity is very high for copyrights copyrights suppose i am the author i have written a book it is still my lifetime till i die plus 60 years till my lifetime plus 60 years that long period is the copyright is valid so very long period copyright is valid for very long period suppose there are uh, not original there is no physical entity like author suppose there is a publication which is not known who has done it so the date of publication and there is 60 years from that and suppose there is one society made a publication not a person society is never dies so human being has a life but society can and uh, live for hundreds of years so society how to determine his life plus 60 years so for society such a, uh, things where it is not a human being then it is the date of publication plus 60 years for broadcasting it is 25 years suppose there is a radio broadcast of my speech that is uh, copyrighted for 25 years beginning the year in which it is uh, broadcasted okay. and the beautiful part of copyright is you need not have to file a copyright with the government you simply declare in the corner of your painting or drawing or whatever this material is protected with copyright by so and so if you write on that uh, corner of that painting then it is as good as you have taken a copyright for it so filing a copyright is not mandatory to get infringement benefits uh, against infringement benefits against infringement so copyright has a beautiful uh, provision in the law you need not actually file a copyright to get the protection copyright belongs to whom next question is copyright belongs to whom suppose there is a student in ari who has done some drawing or some painting or something so is it belongs to student or is it belongs to the institute so an employer an employee or a student 
who are already part of the institution so institute gets those copyrights not the student suppose the student has done work in the laboratory some he recorded some experimental values the copyright for it belongs to institute suppose he is not a employee he is not a student but uh, suppose it's a third party means institute had engaged some outside agency to do some work for the institute then in that case the uh, right copyright not automatically belongs to the institute it has to be specially taken while assigning that work to the third party you are doing this work for the institute but the copyright out of this belongs to institute like that they have to enter in agreement then only we can protect our copyright that's why whenever we make any dealing with our vendor whenever we any dealing with other even other uh, education institute we will tell them please sign non disclosure agreement so that the copyright anything whatever come from my work others cannot be uh, used for copywriting so we have to be careful legally while sharing our data what are these rights what are the rights uh, uh, obtained by filing a copyright or even declaring it's a copyrighted item <coughs> so the right is right against infringement okay it can be legally prosecuted the infringer what are the rights the rights are suppose you wrote a story the you have the right not only for the story narrating suppose the story somebody narrates to other pub or any public elsewhere then you have the right on that uh, story because you unless you grant a permission to him you are he is not supposed to narrate your uh, written story in the public elsewhere so that is violation of copyright suppose you wrote a story some film producer reads it and makes a film out of it he is violating that your uh, copyright the making a film out of your story is a violation suppose you wrote a poem in telugu and suppose somebody translate it to hindi it's a violation of copyright unless your permission is there if he translates without your consent it is violation infringement of your copyright translating suppose somebody prints your poem 1000 copies and distributes to the public it is also without your permission then it is violation of copyright so like this many protections were there for your copyright suppose you make a story somebody reads a story and perform a drama out of it then it is violation of your copyright in the context of drama even the performers have some rights so with that we have completed uh, a discussion on uh, copyrights i hope you understood uh, basics of copyrights who gets it what is the term period for copyright and uh, what act indian act uh, is uh, uh, related to copyrights so we will move to next chapter called geographical indications and trademarks so geographical indication of goods this is a wonderful uh, provision by the government so which by which you can protect your uh, reputation so but only condition for this is the particular good shall be manufactured within the territory territory this is a territorial right it has to be produced within a particular territory the local climatic conditions the locally available material or local skilled works Skill, uh, skill of the workers would have contributed to the performance that item. For example, there is one uh, dish called uh, Hyderabadi halim. Okay, so the Hyderabadi halim is a specific uh, dish uh, which is made with a local Haryana, uh, local Hyderabadi ingredients and skill of the people uh, from the local Hyderabadi restaurants. So they applied for a geographical indication so hyderabad halim so it was awarded in 2010 so the geographical right is given not to any business establishments it is given to set of people who belongs to that particular region suppose all the sweet manufacturers of mangalagiri 
Mangalagiri specific sweet is there, some kaju, halwa, something. So, it is famous for that, let us say. So, the traders in that region, the taste comes from the, for that sweet comes from the locally available material, weather conditions or skill of the local people. So, nobody in the world elsewhere can sell their product as a Mangalagiri halwa if it is not made in Mangalagiri one from one of these traders. It is not given to a specific trader, but it is a group of traders. As I narrated, Hyderabad Halim got a geographical indication in 2010. So, you cannot sell Hyderabad Halim in Lucknow unless this was physically made in Hyderabad, transported all the way to Lucknow. Okay. Then people thought, uh, why not Hyderabad Biryani, which is world famous, but uh, government refused to give uh, GI indication for Hyderabad Biryani. Because by the time people lodged this uh, claim, it is already in the public. So Hyderabad been already being sold in uh, Washington, Bangalore, Calcutta, everywhere. If they grant GI for Hyderabad Biryani, they have to remove that Hyderabad from all their uh, menu cards. So, already it is percolated to public. So, government refused to give uh, this court case also there. It ran for seven years. Finally, they refused to give uh, Hyderabad. So, Arevari Biryani is not got a GI. So, it can be manufactured, made in Varanasi and can be sold anywhere in the uh, world. So, we do not have uh, uh, geographical indication for it. Some of the goods where GI is there, Darjeeling tea. Unless that tea was produced in Darjeeling, uh, you cannot sell it, say Darjeeling. Suppose you uh, grow that tea plant in somewhere else, suppose in uh, Nilagiri, so you cannot sell like a, it is Darjeeling tea. Similarly, Tirupati Laddu, it has got a GI. Unless it is made in Tirupati uh, with those uh, whoever traders associated with that GI, if they make only, they, it can be sold under Therapathy Laddu. Suppose somebody makes that Laddu in Hyderabad, you can prosecute him. So, it cannot be called Therapathy Laddu. Some other Laddu they can call. Similarly, Chanderi Seri. The saris made in Chanderi has a specific texture and uh, skill and uh, some specific ingredients. So, Chanderi Sari, unless made in Chanderi by that group of people who got this GI, then only you can sell a uh, Chanderi Sari. Suppose it is made in uh, Dindigal, you cannot sell like a, a Chanderi Sari. Similarly, Shahanarpur woodcrafts. The particular things were done in Shahanarpur that wood has some special skill for the local uh, people. They have got a GI. So, the GI goods has to be produced in the particular territory where it is granted. And this is not given to individuals. It is uh, not given to uh, organizations or proprietary firms. So, where one, one owner and some people, if they are not, will give into a specific uh, single business entity. It will be given to a group of people, like a cooperatives. Such kind of people will be given this GI. What are the, why, when or what prevents GI? Uh, why sometimes government uh, refuses GI? If you have to understand why it refuses GI, suppose the use of which would likely to deceive cause for confusion. Suppose the geographical indication uh, gives uh, a confusion in the consumer mind whether it is uh, belongs to a specific place or it suppose it is likely to cause any confusion. Then uh, nobody will give suppose say French wine. Uh, French may be famous for wine so no, no other place you will get that uh, J for French. Suppose somebody gives here a French wine as a GI, then it's likely to create confusion. And the use of which violates any Indian government act, then it is denied. Then suppose the GI indication has some obscene material or scandalous content, then also it will be denied. And suppose it uh, hurts religious sentiments of certain sections. Uh, of citizens of India, then also it can be refused. Similarly, there are further provisions in the Act. There is one variety of mangoes called Bengalpilli mango. It is uh, Bengalpilli mango is a name of that mango, so that cannot be taken as GI because already it is in the public. 
suppose uh, grows in the bangirpalli they want to take bangirpalli my ji then that seed cannot be uh, planted anywhere and cannot be grown so since it is already in the public and it is grown already all over india and many other places so this will not be given so what is the period for geographical question it is for 10 years and uh, it cannot be assigned like copyright geographical indication i took for, for let us say for a particular um, dindigal halwa i have taken a ga i cannot sell this my right to somebody in bombay to market this uh, dindigal halwa there so it cannot be assigned copyrights and patents can be assigned but not geographical indication you cannot uh, give a license to somebody you cannot pledge or mark case similarly so with this uh, we'll stop today and uh, we'll continue other ip indications in the next section thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates